Welcome to your worst nightmare. Yours because you made it. Hey there, this is the Zombie Night Terror level editor. I'm just going to do a quick overview of the panels and menus to get you a general sense of how it works and what you can do with it. Also, happy Halloween. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Clearly. Don't have my voice. There are three main components to this uh, editor. This top toolbar, a left brush toolbar, and a right layers panel. So you can actually see on the top toolbar there are three main tools. There's paint tool, select tool, and edit events tool. With the paint tool selected, you can use different types of brushes uh, to paint out your level in the paint panel on the left. Uh, you'll see that there are two types of these brushes though. There's a tile and a prop brush. Uh, the tile brushes are tile based, which means they're always on a grid. Uh, you can see this grid if you just uh, click one of these brushes. You'll see that you're moving around on a grid. But uh, you probably want to see this grid, right? So you go to the right layers panel and you can click the grid um, option up at the top. And once you, there you go, you can see the grid on the background. It's amazing. Uh, as you move around, you're going to see that the brush square always fits into a tile on the grid. So if you start to draw the ground, it's going to stay aligned um, just as you draw walls and ceiling here. All of it continues to stay aligned on that grid. The prop brushes are a little bit different. Uh, they're free images, so they can be placed anywhere and they don't snap onto the grid unless you want them to. Um, I'll show that in just a second, but we're going to place this sign here. And uh, let's put some bushes down. But you can see you can put these anywhere you want to. Make some nice fluffy bushes. But if you use the snap slide tool, you'll see that you can do varying degrees of snapping because you're actually changing this invisible grid for them to sit on. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can just freely place them. It's more fun anyway, right? So you can see actually that all of these brushes in the panel are corresponding to categories. And these categories represent layers. So we see the foreground gameplay layer here uh, corresponds to the layers in the layer panel on the right. Uh, so if you, say, pick a brush like a zombie and add it to the scene, uh, you're going to see that on the layers panel on the right, uh, you can disable these different layers. If you disable the gameplay layer, for example, where the zombies are, Yeah, so the zombies and the ground walls, they all disappear. Uh, when you choose a brush, just remember that the category you're choosing corresponds to a layer and cannot be drawn on other layers. You're only drawing on the one where you select. So the, the zombies can only be drawn on that, that gameplay layer. I uh, also notice there are two types of uh, brush layers, the tile and prop. Uh, they have their own layer folders. So the elements drawn with the props brush were drawn on the foreground layer of that props layer folder. So if you want to turn those off, you're going to have to go under the props layers to turn that off with the foreground. Super fun, super fun. We're going to move on to the selection tool. This lets you click on the interactable objects such as the zombie, which allows you to access a lot of options for the zombie. Since this is an overview, I'm not going to go into detail about all of these. But I'm going to be posting more how-to videos on all of this, so just be sure to check those out. Uh, but for now, you can just take a look at the number of options here. Quite a few. Uh, but I'm going to go over just a few of these with you, just so you understand the basics of this. Uh, at the top here, uh, this one, for example, will reset the options to default, so it'll just reset everything you did. <laughs> uh, this one lets you move your interactable character or object around. Uh, Around on the level. And this one lets you delete the object. For zombies, you have uh, these options down at the bottom uh, to make them move. This one uh, will make it move on the start. So if you don't want that, you can unclick it. Uh, but we do want them to move on start. This one selects the orientation. So if you want them to go left or right, but we want them to walk right. And you can change the default uh, speed here. Uh, right now it's on walk, but you could also make them run around if you want to. We're just going to leave it on walk, just because that's how we want it to move. 
you should know that there's also an event editor tool up here we're gonna use. Uh, it allows you to make links between interactive elements. This is how you're gonna make the level interactive. Um, kind of your best friend, you know, if you want people to play your level. Otherwise, you're just making people watch cutscenes, which is cool, but not as fun. So to use this, we're going to go ahead and select a trigger. Uh, in this section, there are a lot of elements that will not be visible in-game when you're playing, but they allow you to uh, edit behaviors in the level. What I need is a zombie trigger, so I'm just gonna... And the zombie trigger... Oh my god, there's so many of these. Alright, so I'm gonna select this trigger and place it on the level. Uh, actually, I'm gonna move this up a little bit in space, so that way we can trigger those two areas of the grid. All right. And what you need to know is that when a zombie enters or exits the trigger radius, you can affect the level using another trigger, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, we're going to find a human spawn now, because everybody likes spawning humans. It's a fun activity. Uh, so let's see. Spawn. Oh my god, I swear. It was in here. It was in here just earlier. Oh, oh, it's in gameplay. So the human spawn, I'm gonna place it on the level. And I'm gonna use the handy dandy select tool to go into options. I want five people to come out, uh, but not at the beginning. So I'm going to uncheck active. I do want them to move at the start when they exit the door and they should be going left because who doesn't want to walk into a straight line of zombies. Now I'm going to use the edit event tool. Uh, I'm also going to uh, click on the target here for my zombie trigger. I have two options that pop up. I've got on detected and on detected exit. This means the trigger will be activated either when the zombie enters the trigger or exits the trigger. Uh, I'm selected on detected and then I'm going to click on the human spawn target icon. Uh, I have a number of options here too. Set active, set inactive, toggle activation. Toggle means that if it's active it can be trigger um, to inactivate and vice versa. I'm going to set this to active and now you can see that the elements are linked. When the level is played, basically what I want to see is for the zombies to pass this trigger and then the humans start spawning out of the door. So, I think it's time for us to test this graphically insanely cool level. Uh, if you want to test, you're just going to need to go to the top right corner and click the play level button. Then the level editor. Here we go. Loading up. Zombies are walking. They're passing my trigger. Oh man! Humans are coming out the door. Uh, the trigger's invisible. And people are screaming in terror. Uh, wow, that's a lot of blood. So, they were supposed to go left. The reason they didn't is probably because there's a horde of zombies walking towards them. Uh, sometimes humans tend not to enjoy looking at people about to eat them. Yeah, that's why they tried to escape my tiny little box, and they could not. That's all the basics. Uh, the next videos are going to cover more in-depth level editing techniques for creating more complex levels. So be sure to check out the next ones, and good luck!